tension evident in the streets of Jerusalem reflects the fast-moving drama of the Middle East, where today's solution turns into tomorrow's crisis. In spite of strong nationalist outcries, Premier Ben-Gurion orders Israeli troops out of the Gaza Strip and the Gulf of Aqaba area. Parliament backs his move with a big vote, but Ben-Gurion's decision is opposed by some persons outside Parliament, and police clamp down on more violent demonstrators. Amidst the fires of destroyed gun emplacements and other Egyptian installations, the Israelis prepare to pull out of Sharm el-Sheikh on the Aqaba Gulf. General Dayan, Israel's military chief, watches over the operation while a rabbi solemnizes the occasion. In leaving, Israel yields to insistent international demands for full evacuation from Egyptian soil. But at the same time, world attention is centered on the Israeli complaint that Egyptian guns here have denied Israel ships the use of the precious waterway. Three hundred miles to the north, United Nations troops under General Burns move into the Gaza Strip. The Israeli officers who have administered the small coastal area for more than three months confer with UN leaders. And then the Israeli pullback gets underway. The striking force that speared out of the Jewish state in October rumbles back to home bases. UN troops take over. They begin setting up the framework for the administration of Gaza. After weeks of uncertainty, a respite seems at hand. But Gaza is far from being still. Almost as soon as the Israeli troops have left, Arabs begin to demonstrate for the return of Egyptian rule. These demonstrations go on to such a pitch that UN troops are forced to use tear gas and fire warning shots. Then, accusing the UN of overstepping its authority, Egypt's President Nasser moves to take over control of Gaza. Suddenly, the carefully built Middle Eastern peace seems once again on the brink of collapse.